Welcome to Watercolor After Dark. My name is John Walker and we're going to paint through a simple barn scene and I've got the reference photo here and as you can tell it's just a simple barn scene. We're going to mess a, mess a little bit with the sky because the sky is kind of boring in this one so we should have some fun. Hope you come along and uh, we'll get started with the drawing and then we'll move right on into the, into the painting. So look forward to it. Okay, we're going to get started. This is, the, this is the barn scene that we're doing here. So what I generally like to do when I draw things, I wasn't classically trained. So I like to look at the longest lines. And that's what I tend to draw first, is I, I, I scout out the longest lines. I kind of find out where I want my clouds to be. Um, or how much sky I want versus the ground. We may bring this down just a little bit, but uh, I'll get sketching out the longest lines first, which are the roof. That's a little the wrong angle, but we won't worry too much about that. I'll bring it over here, and then we're right about there, and so that'll come down. This will go that way, and then we do have some trees back in the background back there so what I'll do is I'll just sort of give an idea of where I want those there's a couple of them um, and then these trees over here now there's some interesting things there's some key points in this that will help bring out the three-dimensional aspect of the of the painting one is how the light hits this tin versus the shadow behind it. So if we can nail that and then nail these shadows here on the where the trees are casting a shadow and then this shadow here, it's going to give us a really good three-dimensional three-dimensional uh, look. Um, so we'll make sure we do that. And then there's some also some sun hitting behind these trees that we're going to wind up doing sort of the opposite to, to also give some more of that but three dimensional but we'll we'll play around with it. There'll be some spots that I won't I'll try not to hit let paint hit, which is this little triangle, which is right there. So I'm gonna try to keep the paint off of that. The trees are up in here. And I'm just gonna give like little reference points of where I want that tree. It kinda comes right down here to the tin. And then there's gonna be some foliage in here. And then we've got our We've got our foreground, and we'll have a tree down in here. And so, may have to bring that foreground up a little bit, but we'll play with it as we go. And then there'll be some interesting things off over in here. So that is a pretty simple, quick drawing of the picture. Um, at least it, that gives us a place to start. I'm going to reference some of these shadows now. Um, so we know where they are and we know what to do with them when we get there and we kind of know what we want to do and then there's some shadows there and then there's a little opening back here behind a tree so I'm going to kind of put that in there and I'm just going to it's going to be more of an impressionistic style painting so things don't have to be exact but when at just a glance you'll know it's a barn with some some trees around it so that's kind of where we'll start so that kind of wind that kind of uh, lines out the painting or I mean the what we want to paint the and uh, we'll go from there so we'll go to the watercolor side and I'll kind of walk you through my my direction and my style on how I do this so we'll be back with painting Okay, I'm gonna get started here. I'm gonna try to stay out of the out of the out of the shot as much as possible, so you can kind of see what's going on here. I've got clean water. I've got my usual messy palette over here. Um, I rarely clean this. You get a lot of interesting interesting things going on when you when you don't really clean your palette. But we'll bring up some uh, you know new colors too and 
and play around with it. What we're going to start with here though is we're going to start with the sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some fairly clean water and I'm just going to I'm just going to go around. I'm going to make this a cloudy day. I know this painting here, I mean this reference photo is just a kind of a blue sky with a couple clouds, but I want to make it more interesting. So I'm just going to touch the paper and not really paint the whole thing. I'm just doing touches of it um, with just water. And then I'm going to bring in manganese blue, which is sort of a, a, a bright blue. Um, if you guys can see that. It's uh, Daniel Smith manganese blue hue. And I'm going to bring some of that in. And it's going to give us some some bright spots in our in our sky. <clears throat> and then we're going to uh, we're going to have some fun with that. So there's it's dropping just real light of that blue, and then I'm just going to kind of let it spread out. I let gravity do a lot of my work for me. Um, just going to touch on, and then what I'm going to do after we get that is I'm going to take paper towel and I'm going to pick up some of these places that I just want there to be clouds. So it kind of gives us the cloud edges. Um, and I kind of want the clouds to kind of be coming at us and building up. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to create that effect, that illusion. Um, so that's just a real light, but maybe hard to see, but it's just a real light manganese blue on there. And then I'm going to go back into the palette and I'm going to pick up what I know some of this stuff is, is just a darker, like an indigo that's down in there. Um, there may be some neutral tint in there, but I'm going to pick up some of that stuff. I'm going to drop it in, but I'm going to let it float kind of to the bottom of the sky-ish. And I see I've got a hard line here, so I'm going to get rid of that hard line just by taking, taking a brush with just a smaller brush, synthetic brush with just water, and I'm going to go over that and kind of lose that line there. And I'll go back to my natural hair um, sable, and I'm going to pick up a little bit more indigo, and it's going to start getting a little darker, a little darker, a little darker as we go. And it should start having that effect of, as you, as you know, most clouds kind of hold the water towards the bottom of the clouds. And that's where you get a little bit darker cloud at the bottom than at the top. The top usually is reflecting the sun. So you've got that going on. So we got the hard edges there too again. So I see that. So we're going to go over here with that clean water and just kind of smooth those out and let that drop down. Now gravity is bringing it down. I'm going to kind of clean it up. Don't ever be afraid to touch your painting with your fingers. I, I touch my paintings all the time um, and it doesn't hurt it. So I'm going to stick with a synthetic brush but this time I'm going to pick up a little bit of a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and that other mix that was already in here, indigo and manganese, and I'm going to drop that in. And I'm just going to touch it in a couple different spots, and it's going to give it, you know, a little bit more character into the sky, a little bit more story to tell there with what's going on, the clouds coming in, and it'll kind of, uh, kind of paint itself there. I'm going to spread these out a little bit, and um, so that's looking pretty good so far. And what I may do is I may bring in a little bit more of the blue. So I may use cobalt this time. I'm going to drop in a little bit of cobalt. i got to make sure I don't get this too stark or too, I don't want too much in there. So I'm going to touch right there and just kind of let it spread out. So it's going to give it a little bit more. I've got some hard edges here that I don't really want in there. So I'm going to take that synthetic which is water. I'm going to I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit. And um, a color in the sky that usually indicates some sort of storms um, is, is some sort of a teal, like a cobalt teal blue. And I, if I just touch that in there, 
I'm going to let that, now this will dry a lot, it'll dry a lot lighter than it is. And it, it seems awful green right there. I'm going to connect it on the other side with the same color, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of lighten that up a little bit. And that's going to give that sky a little bit more character. And then I'm going to take on the other side, because I always like to connect my paintings from side to side. I'm going to put a little bit on this side too. Um, and let that kind of blend in. So it looks like the sky's coming along pretty good. Um, I'm going to move on to the to the grass down here. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to pick up basically just straight yellow ochre. And we're going to do some other things with it, but for now just the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to, with the natural hairbrush mop, which what they call it, I'm just going to come on here and I'm just going to go across. And kind of let, let it do what it wants to do. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. I'm just going to come across and just keep coming. Can't be afraid to hurt your paintings as far as throwing the paint around on them. It's not going to hurt them. I'm bringing a little bit more through here. Now, one thing, this is going to dry really, really bright. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of, a little bit of, um, a, a darker color, which is like a burnt sienna, and I'm just going to touch through here. So it just kind of takes away the bright, stark part of it. Now I do want some bright because it's a pretty bright sunny day, so I do want some of it. I just don't probably necessarily need it all. Now alizarin crimson is a color that I, I sometimes use on a wet ground that I'm doing uh, yellow ochre because it'll just kind of give it a little bit of character when that when that starts spreading out and getting you know spreading out in the, the wet page it'll give it a little bit more character something else that's there on the uh, on the ground but it's just things that I do just to kind of cover more dimensions to the to the painting I'm going to pick up the yellow ochre a little bit more I'm going to go a little darker up in here um, on this part here so Okay, now on the on the tin, that's sort of a blue gray. So I've already got this blue from the sky over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red, just a touch. It's because ye red, yellows, and blues tend to make gray. And so I'm just gonna do that and mix it around. And it's a little bit more gray than it is blue and I'm going to put that in here and I'm just going to wipe it on. It's not real thick right now, but that's okay. I don't, this first layer, I don't really want thick. Don't worry about where you're going to put the trees because it's going to go right over top of this. And don't worry about this over here. Just paint right over top of it because it's all going to get, it's all going to be real dark anyway when we start doing some final dry brush strokes and things like that. So just bring it in. Um, we're going to try to keep this part right here is the part that I said I wanted to keep from painting on because we're going to bring out that light behind there. So now here's something that happened just now. I want to point it out. A piece of my brush came off onto the painting. The last thing I want to do is that, the last thing I want to do is try to pick that off of there. Just let it dry and you can blow it off. So if you try to pick at it or scratch at it, you'll leave a mark on the painting um, that the paint will always want to funnel into because you've made a, a dent on the page. So just leave it alone. I mean, if you want to do that, which I just got rid of it that way, but if you can't get rid of it that way, just leave it. Just go back to it later. Back. So that's usually how I get rid of uh, things that are on the paintbrush. Um, I'm going to make that a little bit darker because it doesn't seem like it's... Um, there you go. Now that'll dry it'll it'll flow down because I've got my I've got my easel at a tilt here it'll flow down and it'll sort of spread out and make it pretty even so that's the first wash um, it's what we uh, it's what I always like to do is a is a wash just to, it sets the tone for the painting um, it's the place where you can paint everything else after all the after that's done so We'll let it dry, take, um, take a break, and come back and uh, do the final. Okay, we're back. Uh, we got the first wash down, and it seems to dry 
seems to have dried really nice. And so now we're going to start putting, we're going to go a little darker, start putting some details in. Um, we'll start with some of the lighter, some of the lighter spots on the tin. And then we'll move into the trees, some of the lighter spots on the trees. Let that dry and then we'll go into the darks after that. And I went to a different brush. It's still a, it's still a um, natural hair, uh, probably gray squirrel. Um, I think it's a sable something, but it's a, it is natural hair. It'll allow me to have a lot more, keep a lot more water in the brush and therefore a lot more pigment. And I can go longer with the painting. I won't have to continue to pick up, pick up color or pigment. So with this one, we're going to get, we're going to get the brush wet, not real wet, but somewhat. And then we're just going to touch on some spots where we want the um, shadows, the first layer of shadows to go. And we're going to try to leave some empty spots. You can see where the shadows kind of dip in and out. And you won't be able to see this just yet on the on the video here, but when we add the blue to it, and I'm going to go with a I'm going to go with a uh, cobalt. You'll see it'll kind of spread out a little bit where we put it, and then uh, and then we can just sort of paint the rest of it. But I wanted to get I wanted to give the impression of how the shadows dip in and out of the the sun there. Um, and I go ahead and do all the shadows the same color. And then if we need to go darker, we'll go dark. But that's usually how I on this. And we'll see it and it'll bleed down into there. Um, and then now keep in mind up here we're going to try to keep the light on that tin. So we're going to come in just below the tin and bring this down. And that look, that's coming out nice there. See I've got some bright spots in between the, the, sh the shadow or the shade I guess. If we're going to call it shade. And then there's another little patch over here where this tree is. It's down here along the bottom and that's a little too dark. Clean my brush off a little bit and there's going to be another shadow down here. So that kind of solidifies the shadows that we're going to want. And then now I'm going to move into the trees. I'm going to use the same brush because I like this size. I'm going to use the same brush on the tree. And what I do when I mix a green is I've got a little spot over here that has yellow and then I just bring in cobalt blue to the yellow and it gets me the green that I need and I can drag it across and bring in more yellow if I need to change the color of the green make it lighter so I, that's what I tend to do with my greens it keeps them consistent so you don't have to make a whole thing of green so now we're just going to dip in here um, we're just going to dab it on because we're going to want to bring out that sky behind it. So I'm going to just kind of touch on some of the areas. I'm right in here. So I'm just going to touch on some of the areas that I want the lighter spots to be and where I've made some of my, my marks. Um, pick up a little bit more in this way. I can go in after this and then I'll be able to go in to the dark areas after this. But this just sort of gets our base of um, the lighter green where the sun is hitting from this side over here. Um, and that'll bring that down. I'm right in this area here. And again, we're not, we're not making it exact. It's not an exact you know, exact picture of, uh, or painting of that, of that photograph. And then we're going to go to the trees back here. Since we're still into green, I'm just going to kind of touch where I want the, the tops of the trees. 
bring it down. There's still some sky behind it. So I'm just going to dab around um, on this tree. And there's quite a bit of openings in this tree. It's got, a, it's got an interesting look to it. So I'm going to try to see if I can't get that same look. Bring in a little bit more of the green. A little bit more green. And this tree here will be there. I'll come right down to the top of this shed. It almost looks like there's some some coming over that edge. A lot, of, a lot of tree growth over this way. So there we go. We're sort of right in there. I'm going to go ahead and drop in the trees colors that I want here because I'm going to start getting going on that shed and I kind of want the tree, these trees done before I start doing some of the other stuff there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And again, it's just, you just drop in color and then we'll take care of some of the more detailed stuff here in a minute when we move on. If it starts looking a little too blue you just add yellow and if it starts looking a little too yellow you just add blue it's pretty simple drop in here so we're down around this area here now there is some green along with this brush that i'm going to kind of pull up now too i'm just going to touch on there and now this is going to be brighter. I'm going to bring in a little bit more yellow on this because it seems to be kind of out in the sun more so I guess than some of the others so make it a brighter patch. Now we see we've got this hard line here so I'm going to take in that synthetic brush with just clean water somewhat clean water and I'm going to come up to it and then I'm just going to drag it around and it'll smooth out that line um, so you don't really have that that kind of a line right there so while we're letting that dry, what I'll do, clean out this this smaller sable, and I'm going to start giving, putting some detail in this grass, and that's going to be kind of um, cobalt blue, and I'm going to probably mix in a little indigo to give it a little bit of a little deeper color, and I'm just going to go through here, and then I'm going to probably use the side of the brush. I'm just going to rake it. I'm just going to rake it up. And now, now that I've done that, I'll take my fingers and just sort of brush it up and sort of do it that way. You kind of see it. Now we'll do some other stuff to this. It's not done, but it just sort of gives us a, a base for what we want to do there. So. We're going to kind of come back to that. So now what I want to do is I want to work on this rust because it's a, there's a lot of cool colors right here. I need to warm it up a little bit because there is rust in that picture or rust on that barn. So I'm going to move to a burnt sienna mixed with a little probably a little bit of lizard crimson and red. Um, and, the, and what I'm also going to do before I do that is I'm going to I'm going to turn this over because I want the rust to kind of move in a certain direction. I want it to move that way. So the only way to move move this way is if you can see the picture. I guess I'm move it. Make it. The only way to make it move that way is to flip the painting over and kind of work at it a different way. So let's try that. Mix it up here. Now 
now that I've got those in there, I'm going to clean the brush off and I'm just going to drag it down where I want those. And then I'll fill in some other spots, but I'm going to, I want to make this a little darker. So what I'll do is I'll take that mix and I'll just touch it to the top. And then let it let it come down, get a little darker, a little more red. I'm gonna let it just drip down. 